Hey everyone, this is Steven Robles, and if you've been on the channel, you know I do a lot of podcasting content, tutorials, tips, equipment suggestions, and so I thought it would be fun to go through kind of my entire podcast setup, what I use to record my audio and video podcasts from hardware, microphone, to audio interface, all the way down to the software. And if you have any questions on the setup, drop comments below the video, I'll answer you there and love to make more videos. I'm not gonna go too deep on the cameras and lenses. Again, leave a comment if you want me to do more details, but I do use two Elgato Keylight Airs, which are really nice. They provide some great light for a video podcast. I do Homekit Insider. And then I actually have a Sony A6400 mounted here on an arm above the desk to do top-down shots for YouTube videos. And I'm recording right now on a Sony A7 IV, and I use that for all my talking head videos and for my B-roll photos. I use it for everything. And that's what I'm using right there. But to jump into the audio side of podcasting, I've gone through a lot of mics. I actually did a whole video on some mic recommendations from beginner mics, USB mics, which would be great if you're starting out all the way up to higher end mics. I had the Shure SM7B, you know, everyone sees this mic everywhere. And it's a really good mic. But I honestly found one I liked even better, which is the Earthworks Ethos microphone. I've been using this not only in my videos, but I use it for all my podcasts, Apple Insider, Movies on the Side, HomeKit Insider. I just love the way it sounds. And it doesn't need some kind of like special audio interface. You could plug it into like a Scarlett 2i2 or similar audio interface, and you'll get a great sound, great volume. You don't need anything special. So that's the Earthworks Ethos microphone. The microphone is on this Rode PSA1 mic arm mounted to the desk, and the microphone is going going into this, which is my audio interface. I'm actually using it right now, but I'll show you some B-roll of it. This is the Sound Devices Mix Pre 3. It's kind of hard to get right now. It's not readily available. They do have a Mix Pre 6 larger version, but that's kind of overkill for what I'm doing. But the reason why I love this audio interface is one, when I was using the Shure SM7B, it had plenty of gain to drive that mic. I didn't need the cloud lifter or anything else. I could just use the Mix P3 and its preamps are incredibly powerful. So I was able to just use this. You can actually record to an SD card on this. So if I travel or I want just redundant backup recording of my microphone, I can record to an SD card locally there. And it acts as a USB audio interface for the Mac. So it's kind of like a Swiss Army knife audio device. It's not inexpensive, you know, it's about seven $750 if you could find it, but I'll try and find a link and put it in the video description and links to everything that I talk about will be there as well. So the microphone's going to this and also connected to the Sound Devices Mix Pre 3 are my headphones of choice. Now you can use cheaper headphones, you can use AirPods, just make sure you're using headphones when you record your podcast, otherwise you're going to get that echo from the speakers of your computer. But I use the Bear Dynamic DT770 Pros. This is the 250 ohm version. Really good high impedance headphones for reference monitoring and editing. I actually have a whole video talking about some headphone recommendations and why you shouldn't use AirPods when you edit your podcast. I'll link that video above as well. So that's all going to the interface. And then the Mix Pre 3 is connected via Thunderbolt, which is overkill. It's just USB-C, but I like to use the fastest cable I can. So it's connected via a Thunderbolt cable to the new Mac Studio. That's my main computer here. You do need a computer to do all this kind of stuff. So again, this Mac Studio is a little overkill. I really got it for more of the video content. If you're doing audio, an M1 Mac Mini would be great or your MacBook Pro, MacBook Air even but that's what it's going into right there. And so that's kind of the end of the hardware chain. Then we go to software. Now, when I record shows remotely, again, I did a whole video on recording shows remotely with guests. I'll link that above. I've been using Riverside and I'm really happy with Riverside. I do audio only and video with Riverside. I highly recommend you try that out. I'll put a link below. But to record all the audio for my shows, I use Audio Hijack. I love Audio Hijack. It's kind of my redundant recording. A lot of times I'll use the Riverside recordings, but I like to use my local recording from Audio Hijack. I record a wave, you know, uncompressed, all that stuff. And Audio Hijack, I have a bunch of different sessions. I actually did a video on Audio Hijack 4, which is a new update. I will link that above as well. And Audio Hijack creates a local audio file for my recording. And I have a session here that records the audio from whatever web browser I'm using Riverside in. So I have the Brave web browser. That's where I'll do the call in Riverside with my co-host or guest. And I'll record the audio from there locally so I have a backup of their audio. You can see here I have Brave web browser as an audio input. I'm not including my audio input. I record that in a separate channel. 
I put some levels on there to make sure that it's getting proper signal. I'm putting a sound out back to the Mix Pre 3 so I can hear them in my headphones. If you don't have that block and you turn on this session in Audio Hijack, you won't be able to hear your guest or co-host. And then that's recording just to an MP3 file, again, because this is a backup audio. And then my Mix Pre 3, I'm doing a dual mono setup, so it's recording channel one, both in the left and right channel. Got some levels there, and recording to a WAV file for my audio. I'm actually using Audio Hijack to record the audio for this video as well. That's the other session running in the background. I record my show, whether I use Riverside or if I'm doing a video like this, Audio Hijack grabs the audio. I have the audio in Riverside as well. So now I got some audio files. Those are saved to iCloud Drive. Really trying my best to not use Dropbox. I still have a Dropbox account, and sometimes I need to share files with non-Apple users. Yes, I actually know some people who don't have Apple devices, and they can't open iCloud Drive links unless they have an Apple ID. I'm hoping Apple changes this, especially on the upcoming WWDC, but I still have Dropbox for those reasons. But I will save those audio files directly in Audio Hijack. I actually have them saved to folders that are in my iCloud Drive. This way, when I'm ready to edit the show, I actually don't even need to be near my Mac. I can just have my iPad or my iPad mini and grab those files from iCloud Drive to edit the show, which now we get to the editing side. So we recorded our show. That's all the hardware and the software to record. And then you have to edit your show. Now, when it comes to editing, I have videos on this. I'll link them above, but I edit all of my podcasts three a week on iPad, and I actually use the iPad mini. It's really light, really portable, and I'm holding it for a long time because if I'm editing an hour show, that'll take me about two hours. I used to edit with my 12.9-inch iPad Pro, and it just got so heavy, I could kind of feel the strain in my hand trying to hold it with one hand, and I don't have a good way to like mount it on the desk. If you guys have suggestions for that, drop a comment below. I'd like to hear it. But I edit all my shows right here on iPad Mini. I use the Apple Pencil. Because all those audio files are on iCloud Drive, I can import the audio right from my iCloud Drive right here. I get them into Ferrite. I have templates here in Ferrite, so depending on what show I'm editing, I can just create a new episode there, automatically populates the next episode number, has presets for my co-hosts already set, love templates in Ferrite. If you want me to go further in depth on Ferrite, let me know. But then I edit my show, let me go to my projects here. So I'll edit the show right here on my iPad. And then when I go to export the MP3, the final one, all the chapters, everything, I hit the share button and I'll save this MP3 file from Ferrite back to iCloud Drive because I'm going to publish it. Now, I could do all the publishing right here from my iPad mini. I use a couple different hosting providers, but instead, I just usually save it to iCloud Drive, go back to my Mac to finish show notes and things like that. If you want to hear more about show notes, I did a whole video on that. I'll link it above. So once I have that final MP3 file, it's ready to publish. Then I go to my publishing provider. I use Buzzsprout for movies on the side. Buzzsprout has great tools, especially if you're just starting out in podcasting. I highly recommend you try them out. And then I also use Fireside for some of my other shows. They have different features, especially in relation to podcast chapters and chapter art. And that's important for those shows. So I use Buzzsprout or Fireside, and that's where I send my MP3. I upload it to those hosts. If you want to learn more about hosting providers, Yes, I have a video on that too. I will link it above. You know, I actually have a whole playlist on how to start a podcast from equipment recommendations to software. So I'll put that in the video description link below and you can learn all about it there. But let me know if you have any questions about my podcasting setup from maybe the video and lights to the audio equipment. Drop a comment below, hit like on this video, and of course, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon so you don't miss a video. I actually have a ton of iPhone and iPad tips in the shorts for this channel, so you should check those out. Those are a lot of fun. Again, I do podcasting content, website stuff, and you know, Apple stuff. I can't not talk about Apple stuff. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.